It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather and he who controls the weather will control the world. The end of the human race will be that it will eventually die of civilization. Profound insight from Ralph Waldo Emerson. And this Wikipedia definition of climate apocalypse. A climate apocalypse, also called, according to Wikipedia, a climate dystopia and climate-induced collapse, among other names, generally denotes, according to Wikipedia, a predicted scenario involving the global collapse of human civilization and potential human extinction as either a direct or indirect result of anthropogenic climate change, i.e. human-caused. Question. If populations around the world can be fully awakened to the global climate engineering insanity, which is core to all that's unfolding, would they then take to the streets with their proverbial pitchforks and torches to seek out anyone, everyone, involved with the insanity in our skies, playing God with the weather, and all those involved in the criminal cover-up of the same, would populations seek them out? to hold them legally and morally accountable. Perhaps time will soon tell. Why do so many in the ranks of the human race have so little reverence for nature, for the web of life on which our lives completely depend? Recent released from BBC, this, Sir David Attenborough has warned that humanity faces its own extinction event comparable to the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs. Climate intervention operations in the entire CV-19 scenario core controller responses to cascading and accelerating ecological collapse all over the world. Keep that in mind. To any that wish to have a true understanding of the wider horizon and the road we're on, both issues require honest and objective investigation. How many are willing? New from SciTechDaily.com, ozone may be weakening. One of the Earth's most important cooling mechanisms, heating the planet more than we realized, Week after week, month after month, these kinds of headlines are coming up. It's much worse than we thought. It's much worse than we realized. For how long, for how many years, a decade and a half, geoengineeringwatch.org has said exactly that. It's far, far worse than any official source is disclosing. Keep the population confused and divided as to the true state of global ecological collapse until the last possible moment. And that's what they've done. But now it's becoming all but impossible to hide the collapse that's happening all over the globe. Crop collapse, fisheries collapse, atmospheric collapse, many, many layers. Here's a short summary of this report on upper atmosphere ozone loss and the warming of our planet. A loss of upper atmospheric ozone and an unwanted increase in surface ozone are both factors that are further fueling planetary meltdown. Both factors are also connected to covert climate intervention operations. Not the only causal factor, but a core primary factor that's not being acknowledged by any official source for obvious reasons. So many are still trying to pretend it's not happening. None of it. But when the food market shelves empty out, denial will be shattered. From foreignpolicy.com, this headline from last week, panicky markets are the greatest danger to global food supply, they say. Anyone that buys that propaganda headline, which is tailored to coax populations back into a comatose state, needs to take a long and honest look at the wider horizon. Crops are struggling at best and or collapsing in many other cases all over the world. Though the planet's life support systems are being decimated by countless forms of human activity, weather intervention operations are a core component in the equation further fueling climate chaos, decimating the ozone layer, toxifying soils and waters, altering atmospheric relative humidity levels, which triggers a phenomenon known as vapor pressure deficit, which I've covered on this broadcast many times. Here's a simple translation of the VPD phenomenon. Not enough humidity, so crops and trees don't function. They don't feed on CO2. They don't release oxygen or grow. And yes, the light at the end of the tunnel is an oncoming train from so many directions. That's not alarmism, it's reality. If you think those headlines were bad, there's a lot more to come. Stay tuned 
And hang on, you're listening to the commercial-free, non-political, global alert news hour. The bad news broadcast brought to you by geoengineeringwatch.org. This is Dane Wigington, your host. This is installment number 350 of this weekly broadcast, April 23rd, 2022. And for the record, so far, I've never missed a single week, nor do I intend to. In this hour, we will address the most critical issues we collectively face, issues on which our futures most directly and immediately depend. How much time do we have left? That continues to depend on what actions we collectively take or don't. Moving on from PBS, the Doomsday Glacier is collapsing. Former warnings on this, now it's getting worse. And that doesn't sound good, does it? Because it isn't. Stay tuned for more on this story in the broadcast. From Scientific American, responses to rising hunger could threaten climate goals. Could? May? Might? Of course, when there's not enough to go around, the law of the jungle prevails and nothing will get done according to plan. Nothing, including the cooling of nuke plants, which threaten all of us. From the Scientific American Report, humanity is now feeling the rumblings of a, quote, seismic hunger crisis, end quote. The World Food Program warned earlier this month, European policymakers are considering easing environmental protection measures to allow for increased crop production. The Scientific American Report then states the world's food system was under strain even before Russia invaded Ukraine. Of course it was. Anyone who doesn't know that wasn't looking at the wider horizon at all. Now the report states, compounded by the war's effect on trade and corresponding spike in global food prices, it faces two dangerous and intertwined crises. The word it, referring to the world's food system and about crops, various forms of weather cataclysm have been increasingly crushing crops all over the world. All official sources blame nature. But as the proverb goes, the truth is the first casualty of war. The construct of industrialized, militarized, so-called modern civilization is broken. It always was. But now, the wheels are coming off the proverbial bus. Climate intervention operations are radically accelerating the entire process. And even now, how many cling to the belief that global power brokers would ask for public permission before committing the planet and us and the entire web of life to a grand and lethal experiment without public knowledge or consent? An experiment from which there is no return. And that's exactly what climate intervention operations are. And anyone who blindly believes the controllers would ask for public permission before deploying these operations needs to open their eyes. Those participating in climate engineering are military, other militaries, and private contractors are being told they are heroes, told that they are saving the planet and humanity, all of which couldn't be further from the truth. As the saying goes, The hero is not he who kills, but rather he who saves. Entire populations have been taught and trained from birth to blindly trust the so-called experts and anyone that dares to question official experts and thus official narratives can expect repercussions and blowback even from their peers and their families, their friends. Isn't it essential that we ask who's paying the so-called experts Who owned and controlled the so-called higher education institutions where the so-called experts were themselves taught and trained? And because these experts hold a certificate of indoctrination from power structure controlled re-education centers, we're obligated to have blind trust in them? Does that make any rational sense at all at this point, given how much we know they have told us that was not true and isn't true? From the meteorological climate science community that is completely blind to the climate engineering elephant in the sky to the medical industrial complex representatives that all too often turn two blind eyes to their own hypocrite, excuse me, Hippocratic oath, Freudian slip. How many have long since sold out for a paycheck and a pension, neither of which will matter for much longer? Moving on from Politico. This headline report from last week, the plan to rebuild a green Ukraine. They say Ukraine could become the manufacturing engine for the EU. Question, what exactly does that have to do with being, quote, green? So many agendas being played out from all sides of the fence in this scenario. Should that come as any surprise at all? There are so many layers to this 
scenario in Ukraine. So many sides with only their own interest in mind. Big oil, the weapons industry, that's two examples. Again, this point to consider, how many have taken note that the blown up and burned tanks and personnel carriers seen on corporate media film footage are almost entirely ancient hardware, perhaps a half century old. And that fact alone should cause pause and reflection. The methods of war being utilized, the same. Very primitive methods compared to the technology that's available today. And yes, it's all horrific. But exactly what are the motives on all sides of the fence? It's troubling that so many Americans actually believe that whatever brand of U.S. corporate media they view, they think they are getting most of the truth. They think that only media from other countries push propaganda, which of course couldn't be further from the truth. The U.S. media is every bit as propagandized as the rest, or worse. And about corporate media commercials, they're truly shocking. A shocking harbinger of just how morally bankrupt societies as a whole have become. If any outside intelligent life form were to view corporate media commercials, what would their conclusion be? That humans base their worth on what car they drive, what clothes they wear, what cruise vacation they've taken, or what big pharma concoction they're on. What a circus of insanity, all of it. Last week, Barack Obama warned of threats to our democracy, something he certainly knows much about from the inside out. But no more than the other side of the political fence, who are also criminals. Political everything is nothing more than power structure orchestrated theater. Division, distraction, divide, and conquer. That's how it works. Those that are caught up in politics on any side of the fence are blind to the wider horizon, just like the controllers want it. Moving on, another form of mass deception, so-called green energy, new from vice.com. There aren't enough batteries in the world to power our huge cars. That's their statement. And no, there aren't. Not even close. And further, everything to do with batteries is totally toxic. A fact that the green energy will save us all from ourselves, narrative pushers don't want you to know. And the bottom line, if the human race remains in the current course, no one will be around much longer. Don't believe such a conclusion could be real? Wait and see. At the conclusion of this broadcast, a rundown on the road we are all on. What will be our near-term destination? Stay tuned. I'll get to the latest headlines on engineered weather mayhem in a moment. But first, how many are familiar with this term, extractive economy? Extractivism is the process of extracting natural resources from the earth to sell on the world market. It exists in an economy that depends primarily on the extraction or removal of natural resources that are considered valuable for exportation worldwide. Take, 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 take. Is it even remotely rational to believe that such a paradigm can continue forever? Are those that are looting, plundering, pillaging, and polluting for profit paying taxes? Generally, no. And here's an example. Big oil giant Chevron, over seven years, showed an income of $39,957,988,302. How much did Chevron pay in taxes over that time? Zero. They even got government subsidies to continue and expand their global operations of environmental destruction and decimation. Subsidies that are now being increased even more thanks to the situation in Ukraine. Yes, many layers, again, to that scenario. Question how many Americans seemingly couldn't care less, so long as gas prices don't get even higher. No functional environment, no humans. Simple equation. From the Washington Post, food, fuel, finance, brace for impact from Russia's Ukraine war. Yes, the Ukraine scenario is horrific and tragic, but this question again, must be asked and answered. Is Russia the only responsible party? And how much profit are the weapons industry robber barons gaining from all of it? And the oil industry? While the planet's last remaining life support systems unravel or are destroyed. But we can just plant lots of trees when it's all over, right? If only that were true. Soil is a non-renewable resource. Soils around the globe are being completely depleted or otherwise compromised and contaminated. And then there's that ozone layer disintegration factor to consider, which we covered earlier, which is a game over scenario in and of itself. 
And though there's countless forms of human activity to consider, countless forms of human damage to the planet, climate intervention operations are inseparable from all that I've just covered. From Fizz.org, this headline, what the invasion of Ukraine means for the IPCC's latest climate change report. That's the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, largest scientific panel ever created on any subject in human history. Summary from the report, bad news for the climate, more of the blame everything on the Ukraine war narrative. How convenient for big oil, for the global controllers and the weapons industry. No surprise, again, how many are actually benefiting from what's happening in Ukraine? That list is long and growing. Except for the Ukrainian people, of course, who are suffering the consequences of all the insanity. So, about the true state of the climate. Here's a hint. Don't let the engineered winter weather whiplash events color your view. First headline, unseasonable warmth to spread through central and eastern U.S. And again, a snowstorm magically develops from the moisture that migrates through this high temperature zone toward the north, turning to snow as it does. Climate engineering is why. Next headline, expansive severe weather threat forecast for the U.S., the large circulation around the storm will draw warm, moist air northward from the Gulf of Mexico. And to elaborate on what I said a moment ago, what happens when the moisture from the record warm Gulf of Mexico reaches the northern U.S.? It turns into another snowstorm. Welcome to chemical ice nucleation cloud seeding being carried out by covert climate intervention operations. Review the engineering winter section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org to learn more. Patented processes for chemical ice nucleating cloud seeding operations have been around since at least 1950. This technology is not new. Please review the extensive list of patents at geoengineeringwatch.org to learn more. But bottom line, snowstorm after snowstorm after snowstorm, with what we're now told is a warm side to the winter storm and a cold side to the winter storm, originating from the record warm Gulf of Mexico. Since when? There's not a meteorologist alive that doesn't know this is going on, but they won't say anything because they won't jeopardize their own personal paradigm. How selfish is that while well, the planet goes down in flames and everyone and their posterity faces no future? Not blaming everything on climate engineering. Human activity has decimated the planet in countless ways. I recognize that fully. But the intentional intervention with Earth's life support systems with highly toxic elements is the greatest and most immediate threat we collectively face short of nuclear cataclysm, which climate engineering is also connected to. From fortune.com, this. Impossible to work after 10 o'clock in the morning. India swelters in hottest March in 122 years. This is a new article, but they're referring back to the records that are now in on March. India has recorded its hottest March since the country's meteorological department began keeping records 122 years ago, threatening lives and the food supply. Remember that food supply in every country at the critical point of crop development and harvest either flash freeze heat dome fries the crops one catastrophe after another after another crushing crops around the globe and it states just as the country is about to enter its hottest season of all and the crops are already being crushed yes more food supply threats and for those that don't know photosynthesis slows dramatically if temperatures go too high photosynthesis stops completely at 104 degrees fahrenheit now, this headline from multiple sources, our food system isn't ready for the climate crisis. That's a gross understatement. And it's not just a climate crisis. It's abrupt climate collapse, which is a climate cataclysm. Climate engineering operations further fueling the entire scenario. For many sources, this. Both the U.S. and the EU are working to expand the use of crop-based biofuels. Wow, what another stroke of genius from the so-called experts. Let's turn our food into gas. How's that going so far? From Scientific American, this related headline, biofuels are bad for feeding people and combating climate change. The report states, by displacing agriculture for food and causing more land clearing, biofuels are bad for hungry people and the environment. Now consider this. That headline dated back to a decade and a half ago. I brought it up specifically to point out that in spite of the fact that it was well known that this was a complete negative practice, turning food into fuel, it continues. And there are even more biofuels negatives than those mentioned. So why is this practice continuing? Now that blank isn't hard to fill in, is it? Because special interests in robber baron criminals are profiting. That's why. 
There's more from cleantechnica.com. New York enacts first in-nation plan to electrify all state school buses. From that report, most of New York's 50 thousand school buses currently run on diesel fuel, exposing children across the state to harmful pollutants with proven links to respiratory conditions and cognitive impacts. Yes, diesel fumes are definitely bad, but how much worse is the atmospheric particle pollution from climate engineering fallout? Stated to be, in the case of aluminum nanoparticulates, 10 to 20 million tons a year annually. Other elements, barium, strontium, manganese, polymer fibers, graphene. How bad is all of that? Individually, it's horrific, and when it's mixed together, synergistic toxicity takes over, and it's far worse still. There's virtually no place to hide from this fallout. No official source will acknowledge it, let alone do anything about it. Let's just pretend electric buses will fix everything. And of course, the electric bus report doesn't mention the legions of slave child laborers working in third world countries that are scratching up all the trace minerals needed for the school bus batteries, destroying their own environment in the process. And yes, the feel good technology will save us article left that part out. And the part that disposing of these batteries creates another huge toxic mess. Let's skip over the not so pleasant parts. I think the correct term is greenwashing in this case, isn't it? Again, please search and view Planet of the Humans to find out just how unrenewable renewable energy is and just how bad it is for the environment overall. Again, it's better than the outright burning of hydrocarbon fuels, not denying that. But anyone who thinks that current, quote, green technology is going to save us from ourselves, think again. So how bad is it? New from Newsweek. Methane feedback loop beyond humans' ability to control may have begun, the article states. That's from National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The report states methane feedback loops that may now be beyond humans' ability to control may have begun. Scientists with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration have said, according to NOAA, methane is 25 times more powerful at trapping heat in the atmosphere compared to carbon dioxide. Ooh, there's a big lie, a giant lie. And that's what the official agencies are tasked with doing, pacifying populations until the brutal bitter end. Here's the truth. Methane's 25 times more potent than CO2 at about a 100-year time horizon. Over a 10-year time horizon, it's 100 to 120 times more potent. Over a one-year time horizon, it's close to 1,000 times more potent than CO2. But you won't see that in these articles because they don't want you to know. That would be far too alarming. The public might panic. And the power structure can't afford that, can they? New from grist.org. This headline, don't look down. As permafrost thaws, the ground beneath Alaska is collapsing. And what's releasing? Methane. Next headline, same theme from MSN and other sources. Climate toll on Arctic bases, those are military bases, sunken runways, damaged roads. U.S. military bases in the Arctic and sub-Arctic are failing to prepare their installations for long-term climate changes as required, even though soaring temperatures and melting ice already are cracking base runways and roads, along with increasing flood risks. That's a statement from the Pentagon's watchdog office. The Arctic is warming two to three times faster than the rest of the world. A March heat wave that hiked Arctic temperatures to 50 degrees above normal stunned scientists. And let's not forget the Antarctic, where it was from 70 to 90 degrees above normal. But not to worry. Drilling for more oil will save us, right? From the New York Times, Biden plans to open more public land to drilling, loot, plunder, pillage and pollute until nothing is left and the planet is dead. What a great plan, Joe. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Business as usual. Although, not for much longer. The next headline is an ongoing and worsening scenario that I've covered reports on in the past. What the so-called experts previously said might happen someday is already unfolding. Is that really any surprise? From PBS, this, the doomsday glacier is collapsing. Who is most at risk? Question mark. The report states the most consequential tipping point when it comes to sea level rise is the Thwaites Glacier, also known as the Doomsday Glacier, located in West Antarctica. When this massive ice sheet fully melts, 
The Earth's seas are predicted to rise by at least two feet. But perhaps the greater concern is what will happen to the surrounding ice once the Thwaites is no longer there to stabilize the region around it. Many scientists predict that were this system to completely collapse, we would actually see around six feet of sea level rise, a truly catastrophic scenario. Let's look at an even more catastrophic scenario. How much ice is in Antarctica when it all melts, and eventually it will. Not going to happen overnight, but it's happening in the geologic blink of an eye. The changes that are happening now, the earth changes, are occurring at hundreds of times the pace of any previous paleo mass extinction. Hundreds of times faster now. Total sea level rise from all the ice melting in Antarctica, which will happen in the geologic blink of an eye. About 197 feet. That's a little more catastrophic than six feet, isn't it? Add another 21 to 24 feet from Greenland and another 10 to 15 feet from the rest of the Earth's glaciers. That's problematic, wouldn't you say? How many metropolises will be completely underwater? Time to buy your snorkel and your mask if you live in a coastal city. And going to articles like the one I just covered from PBS and posting a link to the geoengineeringwatch.org climate engineering documentary, The Dimming, is hugely helpful for the battle to expose the insanity in our skies. Geoengineeringwatch.org needs all the help we can get with this kind of effort. Please help us in this fight by sharing the link to The Dimming documentary anywhere and everywhere you can. It can be found on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Moving on. From many sources, this, researchers predict active hurricane season. Translation, climate intervention operations management is scheduling an active hurricane season. And this doesn't mean that more hurricanes wouldn't otherwise happen in a rapidly warming world without climate engineering. They would, as our planet's oceans, again, continue to superheat. But hurricane manipulation has been ongoing since the on-the-record start of the U.S. military's involvement in hurricane modification, Project Cirrus, in 1947. Search geoengineeringwatch.org hurricanes and review some of our reports on the subject. Perhaps use a search engine other than Google. Google is doing their best to hide all data from geoengineeringwatch.org. Another headline from multiple sources. South and Central Asia are reeling from an early heat wave. The report states the early heat wave scorched the plains of Pakistan, including Karachi. The early heat wave has led to more fires on farms in Pakistan. All high temperature records were broken in Ashgabat, the capital of Turkmenistan. In what many called a springless year, 2022's winter suddenly transformed into scorching summer when Pakistan experienced an unprecedented heat wave even in March. Some cities recorded temperatures of 45 degrees C. That's about 115 degrees Fahrenheit in March. Imagine that. Don't hear about that here, do we, when we hear nothing but cold, cold, cold headlines from the climate engineering cover-up sources like the Weather Channel that, by the way, is celebrating its 40th anniversary and they tout themselves as the most trusted news source. Really. A pack of power structure paid climate engineering cover-up actors is a more accurate description. Last sentence, but an important statement from this article. The deadly combination of heat and humidity known as the wet bulb effect is already a factor. Remember that term. I've covered it in previous broadcasts, the wet bulb scenario, a combination of temperature and humidity that is intolerable to the human body. And it's already happening in many places around the globe. Climate engineers, in the attempt to mask what's unfolding from especially U.S. populations to the last possible moment, is actually further fueling the overall scenario. From the Japan Times, this, Mumbai heat wave leaves fewer fish in the sea. The oceans are superheating. There's about 500 dead zones right now. They're converting to what's known as Canfield Ocean. That's a lifeless, stratified, superheated, oxygenless, dead sea. That's where we're heading at blinding speed. From numerous sources, more food supply issues coming. Union Pacific curtails fertilizer shipments, delaying deliveries, and preventing new rail orders from being taken. The report states the timing of this action by Union Pacific could not come at a worse time for farmers. That's a statement from Tony Will, President and Chief Executive Officer for CF Industries Holdings, who produces the fertilizer. Not only will fertilizer be delayed by these shipments restrictions, but additional fertilizer needed to complete spring applications may be unable to reach farmers at all. What a coincidence, isn't it? Everything affecting food supplies, weather cataclysm, cutting off of shipments in this manner, 
Watch for those empty food shelves because it's coming here much sooner than any dare to imagine. Depleted soils without fertilizer, no food. And for the record, for those that don't know, soils are a non-renewable resource. You can't just keep taking because very soon it becomes dirt, no longer soil. Nothing of value will grow in it once it's been exploited for too long. Also, too hot, no food. Photosynthesis, as I stated earlier, declines rapidly as temperatures approach the triple digits and stops completely at 104 degrees. On that note, blisteringly hot and dry summer ahead for BC, British Columbia, says Farmer's Almanac. According to the Farmer's Almanac, extended summer forecast this year will be very warm and dry. After last year's deadly heat wave, British Columbians are holding their breath for what summer 2022 will bring. How hot did it get in BC last year along the coast of BC? 121 plus degrees Fahrenheit. Obliterating former records. High pressure heat dome. Been over that again and again in this broadcast. The signature of ionosphere heaters like HARP. Creating a high pressure heat dome that spins clockwise in the northern hemisphere. Which spins all the moisture around the U.S. west. Back down into the U.S. Center part of the U.S. where it picks up moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. And pumps it up the eastern seaboard. And cools the most populated portion of the country. That's how bad it is. If you don't believe scenarios can be this extensive, that climate engineering can be this massive, you need to investigate. It's the new Manhattan Project. It's been growing and expanding for over three quarters of a century. Countries and militaries all over the globe are part of it, either actively or passively. Geoengineeringwatch.org has the data and documents to back up this conclusion. And about the Farmer's Almanac, so-called prediction, what is the point of such a publication? To program the population into believing that what's happening is just somehow some natural process. Couldn't be climate engineering, right? Because the Almanac predicted it would happen, so therefore it couldn't be anything to do with climate engineering. That's how people think. That's how they get programmed into believing what they see with their own eyes above them isn't really happening, because officially it's denied. How long will this continue? Our skies all too often look like something from another planet. But people don't look up. When storms approach in Northern California, so often the scheduled rain comes late and less if it comes at all. And we went this year in the watershed to Lake Shasta in the wilderness where I live. We had a rainless winter. From late December to early April, we had less than one inch of rain. And now we've had a bit of rain But it was much less than what was scheduled. Of the almost week of rain that was first scheduled, we got about a day and a half of various showers and drizzles. And now that appears to be it. And how many people, because of this late little temporary cool down, will think, oh, everything's fine again? No, it's not fine. In my location on the east side of Lake Shasta, we're about 500 inches of rain short since 2007. And we have official sources pretending the drought is just beginning. And individuals like Governor Newsom, who knows all about climate engineering, as I've stated on many broadcasts, I've met with Governor Newsom in his office at the Capitol and his top aide when he was the lieutenant governor. He knows all about this issue. We presented mountains of geoengineeringwatch.org data. They couldn't deny it, didn't deny it, but now they pretend it isn't so because who is paying them? Who is controlling them? The whole system is controlled. It's a matrix. It's a cancer, and it can't be fixed. You can't fix this cancer by electing this or that official. When will people from all sides of the political scripted idiocy get that? The entire system is nothing less than a state-sponsored crime syndicate, a fact which is crystal clear to anyone that's paying attention and doesn't have their eyes wide shut. So what's the bottom line for food production? Water. No water, no food. From numerous sources, this expanding drought leaves Western U.S. scrambling for water. From this report, from the Pacific Northwest to the Colorado River Basin, irrigation districts already are warning farmers to expect less this year despite growing demands fueled by ever-drying conditions. An irrigation district that supplies more than 1,000 farmers and ranchers on the California-Oregon border announced earlier this week that they would get a fraction of their normal water allocations, and other farmers further downriver are getting exactly nothing. And here's a headline on the storm that really didn't happen. Late season storm may be last gasp for California's wet season. And this primes people again to not suspect anything's wrong because after all it was predicted, right, by the weather script readers 
who told the population what was coming, and therefore they pretend climate engineering isn't a part of this equation, which is absolutely core to. There's no question that the climate engineers are cutting off the rain to the U.S. West because we can see them on satellite doing it. There's no question. And when the clouds clear, when an incoming storm happens in the North State, what happened? What, what's above those clouds? You see a, almost always a canopy of white filth up there. And that's climate engineering, and that completely disrupts the hydrological cycle. Too many condensation nuclei, the moisture doesn't combine and fall as drops, convection doesn't happen as it otherwise would, or a graphically enhanced rain, which means when the clouds move over the mountains and it really rings them out, that doesn't happen properly. So the rain deficit is far worse than we're actually told because we see rain deficits from municipalities like Redding, California, for example, but they don't report that up in the mountains where there should be four times more rain, there's not much more than Redding. So the deficit is two or three times greater than people understand. And that's all by design. No water, no food. And there's other agendas as well. Again, wildfires serve geoengineering agenda, and they are setting the template right now for extraordinary incinerations in the U.S. West. And there is much, much to that equation. The source of ignition, separate subject completely. What is setting the stage for these forests to burn with such ferocity? And that is a complex issue. And no, it's not just the Beatles. And no, it's not because we're not cutting down enough trees. That is absolutely ludicrous. That's designed to serve the logging industry and other special interests. We have the foxes running the hen house from top to bottom, and the public better wake up to that fact fast because we're almost out of time. From ABC News, Governor Newsom visits Butte County to address climate and drought response. Good for you, Gavin. California's current drought has hit the North State especially hard, with most counties falling into the, quote, extreme drought category. Last week, Newsom announced the expansion of the state's save our water campaign, a move that he hopes will reduce water use as drought conditions worsen. Newsom has invested $5.2 billion over three years to support immediate drought response. Gavin, how about being a man and telling the truth, regardless of the consequences to your own personal paradigm? The sad fact of the matter is this. The Matrix is well stocked with individuals just like Gavin Newsom. They will never tell the truth about climate engineering or any other control or crime. If the insanity is to be exposed and stopped, it's up to us. Moving on, next door in Arizona. This headline, skies turn red as tunnel fire doubles in size, forcing thousands to evacuate. Fire season is now a year-round scenario in the U.S. West. The climate engineers are making sure of that. See the engineering wildfire section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org to learn more about what most would rather not know. From the Moscow Times, this public outrage mounts as Siberia forest fires spread at unprecedented rate. The current area of forest fires burning across Russia is twice as large as the area that had burned at this point in time last year. Question how many are even aware that 40 million acres incinerated in Siberia last year alone? 40 million. And now what's left is burning at twice the pace. Again, please search this following specific headline, one of our most important reports. Wildfires serve geoengineering agenda. You won't like what you learn. For our AM and FM on-air radio listeners that may have just tuned in, you're listening to the weekly installment of Global Alert News, the Bad News Broadcast, installment number 350, April 23rd, 2022. This is Dane Wigington, your host. Global Alert News is brought to you by geoengineeringwatch.org, the largest and most visited website in the world on the subject of climate intervention operations known as geoengineering. The commercial-free, non-political Global Alert News Hour is now broadcast on AM and FM stations in Northern California, Texas, Alabama, Florida, Denver, Washington State, Oregon, the Northeast, Sacramento, San Diego, and San Francisco. Geoengineeringwatch.org wishes to express our deepest gratitude to those that have helped us expand our reach, our voice, in this desperate last hour effort to sound the alarm. And in regard to sounding the alarm, please help us to share the groundbreaking documentary, The Dimming, which fully exposes the climate engineering atrocities. The best way to share it is by circulating the direct link to The Dimming from the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Sharing directly helps us to overcome social media censorship. 
And in regard to censorship, please examine our ongoing legal action against the so-called fact checker that is responsible for triggering Facebook's censorship of the dimming documentary and all geoengineeringwatch.org data as, quote, false news on Facebook because a single so-called scientist says so. He stated that he was, quote, 100% certain climate engineering was not occurring, but didn't have a shred of data to back up his assertion. The link to the full report on our legal action against this so-called fact checker can be found on the geoengineeringwatch.org homepage. And also this link, if you want to hear the debate on air, live radio between me and this scientist, which likely triggered his animosity toward me, search this, debating the geoengineering reality, Dane Wigington and Caltech scientist Douglas McMartin. Moving on and back to the wildfire front. Last week, the climate engineering cover-up source known as the Weather Channel did an hour-long special about the constant and ever-worsening record wildfires in the U.S. West. The Weather Channel, not surprisingly, focused only on the source of ignition for the fires and not at all on the core factor behind the increasing catastrophic incinerations, i.e., what is the primary factor that is establishing the conditions for the blazes? And that factor is climate engineering operations. Climate engineering operations are radically diminishing or completely cutting off rain to many parts of the U.S. West and the world, while other regions are deluged. Rain that is allowed to fall on drought-stricken forests is toxic, killing soil, microbial life, root systems, and thus trees. Climate engineering operations are destroying the ozone layer, causing dangerous and damaging extreme UV radiation to kill trees from the top down. Climate engineering operations are ubiquitously contaminating our atmosphere, our breathable air column. These contaminants, like aluminum and barium nanoparticles, are an incendiary dust, a dust that coats forest foliage and the forest floor, further fueling the fires. These particles also ionize the atmosphere, i.e. making it more electrically conductive, which in turn means more dry lightning, more forest fires. Again, see the Engineering Wildfires section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org to learn more. And while you're at it, check the Engineering Drought section and the Engineering Winter sections. The climate engineers are going for broke. The primary regions of the world that are currently being kept cool or less warm with the chemical ice nucleation cloud seeding operations are most of North America, parts of Europe, and the polar regions. The trajectory of planetary meltdown, however, continues unabated in the majority of the world. So back to the engineered winter in North America, with the expected sensationalized power structure controlled corporate media headlines, confusing and dividing populations on the true severity of climate collapse until the last possible moment, exactly as planned. Next headline on that theme, April snowstorm turns northeast into a winter wonderland. From the report, a major winter-like storm unloaded up to 18 inches of snow in some parts of the interior northeast. Elsewhere, heavy rains caused flooding, and at least one fatality was blamed on the stormy weather, i.e. the warm side of the so-called winter storm. Another headline, same theme from last week. Quote, say it ain't snow, exclamation point. Another April blizzard aims for the northern plains. Report states, Old Man Winter is about to strike again this weekend, unleashing what will be the third snowstorm in a little over a week across parts of Montana and the Dakotas. AccuWeather's expert team of forecasters says the storm could evolve into a full-blown blizzard with travel-snarling snow that could result in feet of accumulation. What an incredibly sensationalized report. Bizarre configurations of snowstorms completely engineered, forming what is repeatedly like a stripe of frozen material across selected regions of North America. The engineered winter weather events, so-called winter storms, again, now with a warm side to the winter storm and a cold side, are unlike any historical winter weather scenarios. Rain now magically, quote, changes over to snow during the course of the engineered event. Patented chemical ice nucleation cloud seeding processes are why. Here's an example from the AccuWeather April blizzard report just covered. They said, quote, in Bismarck, North Dakota, precipitation is likely to fall as rain in the city as the storm arrives on Friday. As temperatures plummet during the storm's duration, a changeover to snow could occur with a slushy accumulation possible by Sunday. The temperatures are dropping because that's what chemical ice nucleating elements do. They're endothermic reacting elements, i.e. energy absorbing. These are patented materials and processes. Search the Engineering Winter section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org to learn more. Here's another sensationalized headline from last week. This U.S. town just picked up four feet of snow in less than a week. From that report, 
Back-to-back snowstorms left residents measuring snow accumulations with yardsticks, nearly 10 times the average snowfall for April. Minot, North Dakota is home to approximately 48,000. Gusty winds made the feet of snow look even more ominous. The powdery snow was no match for the wind gusts. The storm also broke records across Montana. AccuWeather meteorologists say that even more snow could fall across the northern tier of the U.S. before the end of the month. Another winter storm is forecast, i.e. scheduled, to spread snow into the Dakotas for the final week in April. The scheduled weather, engineered winter weather whiplash mayhem, while the U.S. West is dried and fried. Another headline from Fox News last week, quote, all we can do is pray. Prized horses buried in snow during North Dakota historic blizzard. Headline after headline after headline of winter apocalypse, one would think, on a planet that's in total meltdown. The following statement is from Holly Wilson, a North Dakota rancher. Quote, all we can do is pray to God that he wraps his arms around these animals and not just ours. Wilson said, there's hundreds of animals that have no protection and literally all we can do is pray to God this, at this point. I've been over in previous broadcasts. So many of these engineered winter events with absurd weather conditions. We had October 4th, 2013. Snowstorm in South Dakota kills 100,000 cattle while it was 85 degrees and raining in Chicago, 89 degrees and raining in Kansas City. How could it possibly be a blizzard in South Dakota with temperatures starting at 40 degrees? Days later, 100,000 cattle sitting around in the mud. No snow left, all dead. Same events happening in South America with alpacas. Hundreds of thousands killed in multiple events. Over and over and over this happens and population still pretending this isn't going on. I contacted the Ranchers Association in South Dakota and tried to alert them, and they rammed their head in the sand. Didn't want to hear anything. Here's a final statement from this sensationalized headline. The storm has the potential to break the North Dakota state record for the greatest three-day snowfall event ever. That's exactly the kind of headline the climate engineers are after. And how many alternative media sources that claim to be fighting climate engineering will run with the sensationalized winter weather headlines as their self-proclaimed proof that global warming is a hoax? And that's exactly the kind of false narrative that the controllers and the climate engineers want portions of the public to parrot. How is that helping to expose and halt climate engineering? Answer, it isn't. Corporate so-called media sources continue to push power structure propaganda and total deception on countless fronts. Far too large a percentage of the populations are gulping it down without a shred of honest investigation or even contemplation. Another headline on the loot, plunder, pillage, and pollute theme from multiple science sources. Almost two-thirds of species at deep sea hydrothermal vents are at risk of extinction. All species, including us, are now at risk of extinction, for the record. This report, though, states hydrothermal vents are unique deep-sea ecosystems. Vent habitats host a similar density of life as tropical rainforests and coral reefs. These are areas that are increasingly targeted for their natural resources. Again, loot, plunder, pillage, and pollute everything until nothing is left. And who could think such a paradigm has any future? It doesn't. From BBC, almost 400 die in biblical South African apocalypse. The report then states, quote, rain falls differently now. Yes, it does. Drought and deluge, the hallmark of climate intervention operations. Another headline on the same theme from the UK Guardian, South African floods, deadliest storm on record. From AccuWeather, same theme, state of disaster declared in South Africa as AccuWeather forecasters warn of even more rain. The scheduled weather script. They know when more snow is coming, even in a record warm world, and they know when the flooding is going to continue to worsen, not just in South Africa, but also Australia. Same thing happened. But don't worry, the controllers have planned ahead for what's already unfolding. This headline, Seed Banks, the last line of defense against a threatening global food crisis. All these puzzle pieces fit together, don't they? That report states, as climate breakdown and worldwide conflict continue to place the food system at risk, seed banks from the Arctic to Lebanon try to safeguard biodiversity. They then state, seed banks are increasingly considered a priceless resource that could one day prevent a worldwide food crisis. Two in five of the world's plant species are at risk of extinction. And though, and again, it's all plant life, it's all life in risk of extinction at this point. And though researchers estimate that there are at least 200,000 edible plant species on our planet, we depend on just three, corn, rice, and wheat. And that's half 
of humanity's caloric intake, at least for the moment. And here's an update on the Australian flooding scenario, which I mentioned a moment ago. Pilots get, quote, really violent, end quote, threats after online rumors wrongfully pin devastating floods on cloud seeding. This report states, Sydney, an Australian aviation company, says it has received more than 100 threats following online conspiracy theories that its pilots unleashed a flooding disaster by cloud seeding. They say conspiracy theorists spread the false claims on social media after weeks of torrential rains led to deadliest East Coast floods over the past two months, engulfing homes and sweeping cars from roads. Wrongfully pinned devastating floods on cloud seeding? Here's a few headlines to consider. Rainmaking linked to killer flood. That's from New Scientist. States new evidence has emerged that the UK's Royal Air Force was carrying out cloud seeding experiments that could have led to a massive flooding disaster there. Could have. Could, may, might. Partial admission there. Next headline, Dubai floods. Has the United Arab Emirates cloud seeding gone too far? That's from multiple sources. Another headline from the New York Times, rainmaking is used as a weapon by U.S. Another headline, rainmakers caused 1952 flood. And yet we have this from the so-called fact checkers. This is AAP fact check. And they state in their own words, trusted, accurate, and impartial because they say so. Here's the headline from the so-called Fact Checker Report. Conspiracy claims about New South Wales and Queensland floods fall flat. They say false. Cloud seeding is impossible on the scale of the New South Wales and Queensland floods. With no data to support that statement, by the way. They say a La Nina weather system is the cause. The claim is false weather and cloud seeding experts say it's impossible for the rain-making technology to work on such a large scale and the incessant downpours are due to La Nina weather systems. In fact, that has been stated publicly by the Bureau of Meteorology. Oh, that must make it true, right? Official source, right. What made the storm different, they say, is that the mechanism that caused the rain sat in one place for a very long time, much longer than it usually would, in quote. A high-pressure system over the Tasman Sea blocked the usual west-east movement of the system over Queensland. For the record, what the so-called fact-checker organization just described is exactly what an ionosphere heater installation does. The technology is not scientifically disputed. For further reading, search Project Popeye, the now 50-year-old U.S. military weather modification technology that kept Vietnam flooded. How much more effective are these technologies now? You decide. Back to the floods down under from Climate Action Australia. As Australia's climate changes, Japanese encephalitis spreads. Report states there's no cure, and Australia is spending millions of dollars in a rush to import vaccine doses. Well, there you have it. Nothing to worry about. Vaccines will make everything better. About Australia, experts warn Japanese encephalitis could be the first of several illnesses to spread south, and they always seem to know, don't they? Anyone remember the patent for weaponized mosquitoes that I covered in last week's broadcast? A patent which infected mosquitoes with a pathogen before it released them? With that in mind, more from the report on the weather-related encephalitis spread in Australia. The mosquitoes that carry it need pools of stagnant water, such as those created by the heavy downpours of the tropics. They need the pools to breed in. In February and March, the northeast coast of Australia was hit with record floods, conditions that enabled the virus to travel hundreds of miles south and west via mosquitoes biting water birds, horses, and especially pigs. The key message from the authorities is to avoid bites. Easier said than done, isn't it? And this, they say drain or remove standing water. Really? How does one accomplish that when entire regions in Australia are virtually underwater due to the biblical flooding that has now occurred? Can anyone say geoengineering? But that's not all. There's more. Stagnant water seems to be a requisite for outbreaks of Borrelia ulcer, a disease caused by flesh-eating bacteria with a growing presence in southeastern Australia. Imagine that. In the land down under, first record droughts? then record fires, then record floods, and now exotic diseases popping up. All just coincidence, right? You decide. 
Bouncing back to the Northern Hemisphere from CBS Channel 2 News in Idaho, this headline, Milky Rain, question mark. The folks at the National Weather Service in Boise seem to have the answers. Yeah, I'm sure they do. And here is that answer. Wind just blew dust up from a lake bed and it came down in the rain. Nothing to see here, folks. Move on. Don't ask any questions. There's their answer. How about the National Weather Service telling us the giant radar anomalies 100 plus miles long or just clouds of ladybugs or massive swarms of dragonflies or all the other absurd answers we get from the so-called National Weather Service that just parrots whatever they're told to say from the power structure that pays them. That's what these agencies are for. If you think you're getting truth out of any of them, time to wake up. Please forgive me for covering one final highly sensationalized winter weather headline. Here it is. Nor'easter to bring late April blast of winter. The report states winter is clinging on for dear life as calendars mark nearly a month since the first day of spring. An initial blast of snow and cold for the eastern weekend is set to precede a more impactful nor'easter headed for the northeastern United States this coming week, according to AccuWeather meteorologist. This change comes shortly after temperatures hit a balmy 79 degrees. That's officially on the ground. It was higher. Fahrenheit in places like New York City and 84 degrees in Washington, D.C., and now we're headed for a blast of winter again. The big ticket item they say to watch for will be the nor'easter on its way early in the week. Temperatures are set to plunge Monday and Tuesday into the 20s and 30s across the northeast. Snow can mix in with the rain along with the interior temperature drop from the mid-80s to the 20s. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it, as we head even further into summer. Engineered winter weather whiplash again and again and again. Please search and examine the engineering winter section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. He who controls the weather controls the world. A quote from former U.S. President Lyndon Johnson, which can be seen at the very beginning 30 seconds of this post on geoengineeringwatch.org every week. We show that film of Lyndon Johnson ranting like a lunatic making that statement in 1962. And next, this inarguable truth, spoken by Will Durant, American historian and philosopher. He said this, in the last analysis, civilization is based upon the food supply. How true that is, and how apparent that soon will be. I'm almost out of time for this week's broadcast. Let's take a wider look at the rapidly darkening horizon. Journalist Chris Hedges stated that the implosion of capitalism was a result of human insanity, a conclusion that can't be argued if the path that got us here is honestly examined. When civilizations start to die, they go insane. Let the ice sheets in the Arctic melt. Let the temperatures rise. Let the air, soil, and water be poisoned. Let the forests die. Let the seas be emptied of life. And of course, the ongoing climate intervention insanity completely connected to all of it, making all of it worse, not better, while contaminating the entire planet and every breath we take in the process. One useless war after another is waged. The masses are thrust into extreme poverty, and left without jobs, while the elites, drunk on hedonism, accumulate vast fortunes through exploitation, speculation, fraud, and theft. The quest by a bankrupt elite in the final days of empire to accumulate greater and greater wealth is modern society's version of primitive fetishism. The quest, as there is less and less to exploit, leads to a mounting repression, increased human suffering, a collapse of infrastructure, and finally, collective death. It is the self-deluded, those on Wall Street or among the political elite, those who entertain and inform us, those who lack the capacity to question the lusts, that will ensure our self-annihilation, who are held up as exemplars of intelligence, success, and progress. The World Health Organization calculates that one in four people in the United States suffers from chronic anxiety, a mood disorder, or depression, which seems logically to be a normal reaction to our march toward collective suicide. Welcome to the asylum. When the most basic elements that sustain life are reduced to a cash product 
Life has no intrinsic value. The extinguishing of so-called primitive societies, those that were defined by animism and mysticism, those that celebrated ambiguity and mystery, those that respected the centrality of the human imagination, removed the only ideological counterweight to a self-devouring capitalist ideology. And those who held on to pre-modern beliefs, such as the Native Americans, who structured themselves around a communal life of self-sacrifice rather than hoarding and wage exploitation, could not be accommodated within the ethic of the loot, plunder, pillage, and pollute exploitation as we collectively sprint toward the total collapse of the planet's life support systems. How clear can it be that we must restore this older vision of life if we're to have any chance of even short-term survival? The war on the Native Americans, like the wars waged by colonists around the globe, was waged to eradicate not only a people, but a competing ethic. The older form of human community was inhospitable to capitalism, the primacy of the technological state, and the demands of empire. The demented project of endless capitalist expansion, nonstop consumption, senseless exploitation, and industrial growth is now imploding. Corporate hustlers are as blind to the ramifications of their self-destructive fury as was Custer. The gold speculators and the railroad tycoons. They seized Indian land, killed off its inhabitants, slaughtered the buffalo herds, and cut down the forests. Their heirs wage war throughout the Middle East, pollute the seas and water systems, foul the air and soil, and gamble with commodities as half the majority of the world population sinks into abject poverty and misery. The book of Revelation defines this single-minded drive for profit as handing over authority to, quote, the beast. The conflagration of technological advancement with human progress leads to self-worship. Reason makes possible the calculations, science, and technological advances of industrial civilization, but reason does not connect us with the forces of life. A society that loses the capacity for the sacred, that lacks the power of human imagination, that cannot practice empathy, ultimately ensures its own destruction. The Native Americans understood that there are powers and forces we can never control and must honor. They knew, as did the ancient Greeks, that hubris is the deadliest curse of the human race. This is a lesson that we will probably have to learn for ourselves at the cost of unimaginable suffering. Societies constructed on endless exploitation and consumption is not only a formation conditioned by religion, but is an essential religious phenomenon, albeit one that no longer seeks to connect humans with the mysterious forces of life. Such a societal construct calls on human societies to embark on a ceaseless and futile quest for money and goods, and this quest perpetuates a culture dominated by guilt, a sense of inadequacy and self-loathing. It enslaves nearly all of its adherents through wages, subservience to the commodity culture, and debt peonage. The suffering visited on Native Americans, once Western expansion was complete, was soon endured by others in Cuba, the Philippines, Nicaragua, the Dominican Republic, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, the list goes on and on. The final chapter of this sad experiment in human history will see us sacrificed as those on the outer reaches of empire were also sacrificed. There's a kind of justice to this. We profited as a nation from the demented vision. We remained passive and silent when we should have denounced the crimes committed by empire in our name. And now the game is up. We all go down together if we remain on the current course. The epitome of human hubris is man's ongoing and accelerating manipulation of the planet's climate and life support systems with highly toxic elements that are being sprayed into our skies, coupled with ever-increasing microwave and UV radiation transmissions to manipulate those toxic particulates. With an assessment that dark, many will feel compelled to turn two blind eyes to the wider horizon. Many will want to run for cover. Many will feel their only option is to give up. And that's exactly what the controllers want. That's exactly what we must resolve ourselves never to give them. The greatest gift we possess from the Creator is the complete control of our own free will. That is our only true possession that can't be taken from us ever 
And some would argue that if forced at gunpoint to do what we don't want to do, we no longer have free will. But no, this is not true. Compliance is always a choice under any circumstances, no matter how dire. Never forget that. We, each of us, all of us, must ask ourselves, what do we want to be found doing when we take our last breath? Cowering in a corner or facing the full fury of the storm head on, without fear, without timidity, without trepidation, struggling with all our might against the fading of the light and holding fast to the faith that we are not alone in this fight, not by a long shot. Our task, our role, our mission must be to remain at our appointed post no matter what comes until we're relieved by our maker. So long as we're still standing and able to march on in this battle, this we must do. And if we do, who can say what profound and miraculous good we may yet accomplish even at this late hour? Please stand with me in this battle. We are playing chess and we must learn to play effectively and efficiently. We must use the tools we have at our disposal while still available. Reaching a critical mass of awareness is the first and most important leap we can make in regard to exposing and halting the insanity in our skies and in our societies. Sharing credible data from a credible source is key. Please help us to share the link to the geoengineeringwatch.org climate engineering documentary titled The Dimming. Help us to distribute our extremely effective printed awareness materials available on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org at less than our cost. Our only goal is to get the materials into circulation as soon as possible. Check the activist instructions link on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org to learn more specifics on how you can help to move this fight forward. Please make your voice heard, make every day count. Until next week, stay strong, never yield to the collective insanity, and keep your face to the wind. This is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org.